winemaking. The practice of fermenting grape juice and turning it into wine has been around for thousands of years. But there are many nuances to this process, and often different regions will have their own specific processes and methods. Winemaking has become an intricate and deeply personal process. Winemaking practices in Burgundy are partially protected by appellation laws, though winemakers still have a large amount of control over their final decisions. For example, in Burgundy, the only two permitted grapes for making red wine are Pinot Noir and Gamay, with the latter only being used in the southern subregions. The winemaking process begins with harvesting, when the grapes have reached their optimal ripeness and balance between sugar and acidity levels. In Burgundy, many of the top producers will harvest grapes by hand. However, machine harvesting is also allowed for all wines except Grand Cru. The harvested grapes will then go through a rigorous sorting process to make sure that only the best berries are sent for production. This sorting can either be done by hand or with a high-tech machine that removes unwanted berries. Once the grapes have been sorted, they begin the process of vinification, fermenting grape juice to make wine. Firstly, grapes will be put into a vessel, such as a stainless steel vat, cement tank or old oak cask. Traditionally, grapes would be crushed before entering the vats to release their juice. However, many producers nowadays prefer to keep their grapes unbruised and uncrushed, putting them into the vat as whole bunches, including the stems. This can change the structure and finesse of the tannins in the wine. Once in the vat, the red grape juice along with grape skins, seeds and possibly stems will start the process of maceration, which is the extraction of colour, flavour and tannins. During maceration, alcoholic fermentation occurs, either naturally or through the addition of selected yeasts to the vat. Alcoholic fermentation is the process of yeast consuming the grape's natural sugars. There are three natural byproducts of fermentation, ethanol, carbon dioxide and heat. Whilst in the vat, winemakers may choose to increase the extraction of colour and tannins by either pumping over the must, which is the fermenting juice, or cap punching, pushing the grape skins down into the liquid. This cap punching method, known as pigeage in French, was traditionally done by a winemaker walking and stomping down on the grapes. After alcoholic fermentation, the existing juice is removed from the skins and the skins go through a pressing process to release any additional juice. In Burgundy, many producers use a bladder press, which is a very gentle process where grapes go into a tube with a bladder. The bladder is filled with air, crushing the grapes and releasing any remaining juice. The wine will then be transferred into oak barrels. It's very easy to understand the fermenting process. When the grapes arrive, we press, we extract the juice, the must. In the must, we have a natural yeast, and the yeast uh, eats the sugar and transforms the sugar in alcohol. Okay. It's very simple. Does the fermentation process stop naturally, or do you have to stop it? The fermentation stops naturally, because uh, when the yeast uh, don't have uh, sugar, she dead, and the uh, fermentation stops naturally. Once in the oak barrels, the process of malolactic fermentation occurs. During malolactic fermentation, microorganisms naturally found in grape juice transform tart malic acid, found in green apples, into soft lactic acid, which is found in milk. This process softens the wine and helps to give the wine a smoother texture. The wine is then left in oak barrels for maturation over a number of months, during what is known as élevage. This step is critical to the development of flavours and aromas in a red wine. In Burgundy, French oak barrels of 228 litres act as the perfect vessel for maturing the wine. Tiny pores in the wood allow for micro-oxygenation, softening the wine and creating a smoother final product. So, what are the different steps for fermenting a red wine? If you want red wine, particularly with the Pinot Noir, you need a color and you don't have any color in the juice. You need the skin. For the white wine, you press before the alcoholic fermentation. And for the red wine, you press after. The grapes go into big vats. In Remoisne, it is oak vats. You do some different things during the fermentation for the red. You do pumping over, 
uh, we do some pillage, and when the alcoholic fermentation is completely finished, you press. And after, the wine uh, go to big barrels. The oak barrels used for maturation may be reused three to four times, with newer oak having a larger impact on a wine's flavour. On average, winemakers will use more new oak for higher quality wines, with a more complex and structured wine able to hold up to the intensity of the new oak. In Burgundy's Côte d'Or, the richer red wines of the Côte de Nuit tend to have more oak than in the Côte de Beaune. Maturation in these oak barrels for the best red Burgundies may last 15 to 24 months. After the maturation phase, the wine is transferred out of the oak barrels and back into a stainless steel vat, during what is known as racking and blending. Wines that are made up of different vineyard plots will all be blended together into the tank. The wine is often still cloudy at this point, so a process of fining may be done to remove the unwanted particles, thus clarifying the liquid. Fining agents may be natural proteins such as those found in egg whites or fish, though synthetic products can also be used, most commonly in vegan wines. The final step of the process is filtration and bottling, with the wines being transferred from tank to bottle and the final cork being added. Bottles are then labelled and ready for sale. The whole process of red wine making in Burgundy can take anywhere from a few months to well over two years. During this time, winemakers need to make dozens, if not hundreds, of decisions along the way to ensure that they end up with the best possible final product. This is a simplistic guideline to the production of the great red wines of Burgundy, as each and every winemaker will adopt and employ their own techniques to create their own personal style.